Okay, welcome to the beginner's chest session mark two. So as we know, simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically and basically position play is key for us. This castle here. So while we're just getting to the rhythm of the game. Okay, just push here as we know. Everything will seem the same as what we've practiced before. So it's just a matter of practicing and practicing and then finding different patterns for potential attacks. Um, some would call that tactics. I try and get away from the word tactics because it takes the soul out of the game. Um, if you go for positional, then you're playing chess, you're playing more thinking, more strategic rather than relying on a, you know, a certain type of position where you're just going to don't even have to think about the moves and then if you're playing a positional player then you, you come unstuck because after that tactic is done your position is not as good as you thought it was so that's the kind of difference I believe between positional play and tactical play okay so the rook is in the center of the board so it has no place there really but can we take advantage of that doesn't have any protection on it at the minute we could look to slyly try and bring our queen here to here but he can always block down but if they forget themselves sometimes you can get away with it so we're sneaking through looking to see and he has blocked down so he's weakened his area um tenfold because of these pawns his queen is stuck on the back as well how do we take advantage of that situation at this moment in time they're locked down the queen is protecting this pawn we could attack here looking to put more pressure let's attack through the center here we don't have to rush this is a 30 minute zero increment game so at the minute they've got a rook that's in the center of the board as we know our mantra says rooks don't have any place in the center of the board we could capture just to open up this file and see if we can own this file with one of our rooks i think we're going to capture okay so that's fairly okay so we could bring he does have space here for his knight to jump to attack this pawn. We've got to be mindful of that because that's potentially what they're going to do next. So, is there anything else in the meantime? We were going to, in fact, because that knight is going to be doing that, we could take, then his bishop takes, his bishop's got the diagonal, we bring our rook across here owning the file. Seems feasible-ish. because the knight is going to cause us trouble I'm going to just take the knight off the board so at least I'm not going to rule the day he's taken with the rook not taken with the bishop so his rook is further advanced into the center of the board so we're going to try and own this file here with the rook all basic stuff at this moment in time so now the bishop's out looking to control this diagonal well really control this area here so they're owning the file as well we're chomping at the bit to get this, but his queen is supporting the pawn. Queens don't really support pawns, it should be the other way around. So I'm trying to take advantage of that, but also this here. If we bring the queen here, looking like we're coming here, but we're actually attacking the rook. Ah, I see in it. Yeah, okay, so the rook is now safe. It's gone back, it's linked up. So this pawn now is weak. Is there a way of getting to it? Cat fashion knight coming here queen coming there that's a bit of a long process maybe we'll look to double up but then he's going to bring his rook across if we bring the rook up he brings his rook across bring the queen here maybe he takes queen takes then his rook is starting to own the file so they may have found a way of turning the tables and i don't want to turn, want them to have turned the tables i want to own this file but i might be too late to the party if i bring my queen here keep it here because i'm on on this pawn i suppose or maybe i keep it here because i'm on the rook protecting this bishop's wanting to come down here hmm, gotta be careful okay bring the queen here and look to see if we will get oh he moved there quick he didn't even put any thought into that so what's he championing he's coming here no is he coming here no i don't know what the knight move was 
maybe he's protecting his pawn or maybe he's looking to come down and um, start attacking the pawn here so in the meantime I think we're just going to I'm not going to go there because his bishop will attack look for the doubling up of the rooks I'm not sure if that was a missed opportunity or not so his rooks now coming on this side hmm okay let's double up I might have missed a trick somewhere yeah so he's attacking here but uh, why do I feel that there's something wrong with what they've just done if we take I suppose the bishop takes then he's got a free protection here if we attack the knight with a smaller piece which is part of the beginner process okay so he's taken so if we take the knight are we falling into some sort of trap because they're moving really fast take with the knight this knight goes back maybe or stays there or attacks something else bishop attacks the queen or something okay so he's moved back all right so if we take then his rook takes then we have a two on one here on this pawn but then his bishop can do something no nope, i'm going to take so we do oh and his pawn's put, got the two on one protection now we've got a bit of a space in front of his king but can we take advantage of that knight could come here looking for the queen to squeeze here but the bishop is protecting that square at the moment and knight could take the pawn rook could come up and attack the bishop uh, oh okay let's see what's the tail of the tape here i don't think anybody's winning are they no one two three four five six one two three four five six yes yeah, six pawns and um, positionally we look like we can put a bit of pressure on the king but it's going to take a few moves to do that mm Hmm. i'm thinking the rook comes here his pawn's going to drop that will and then we can take with the queen rook comes here to put pressure on the king um, it needs to be something active is that too slow rook coming here attacking the bishop but that's not really got any meat on the bones to queen across Queen up, ooh, queen up, attacking this square, but the queen king just drops. Let's do that. That seems more a bit active than the slow rook move. So he has to do something either here or his queen will come and protect whichever way. But we're also attacking this pawn if the queen goes there, so it's probably going to move the king. Rook's going there to defend. Okay, so if we did go here, his rook comes across, comes across, and then we take the pawn here. But he, he is then facing our king, so his bishop can take the pawn. So if we came here and looked to do something like this, I'm actually going to try that. So he's gone there anyway, so we'll go here. So it was just motor set to do that move because it's looking for the cheapy. Oh, what's that? It's got my queen ish, but oh yeah, that's a nice touch because his rook can go down and put a check on our king. Wow, I moved there very quick. Okay, let's just take the bishop off the board. Okay, that's a nice touch. Then we can put a check on his king he's going for the exchange so he's going real quick now he's playing like a blitz match type thing um if we took then he's got two rooks and i've got a knight and uh, so what i can do is take this rook off the board and if his queen takes then obviously then we take his queen and then he takes our knight then it's a rook rook so then we would have pawns let's have a look at the pawns one two three four five one two three four five six okay so let's take the rook first oh okay 
and then we can take his queen or we can really let me see can we do something else there is 21 minutes we've got here we don't need to rush anything taking taking we've got an extra pawn so can we make use of that yeah the pawn majority on this side is our position worthy i believe it is because he's got split pawns here but that could be quite devastating for us there's no checks or checkmates that i can do over them i'm just trying to be fancy if i go here i'm still on the queen but then his rook comes down yeah let's just take and then put a check on see if he wants to get rid of the rook or not he doesn't want to get rid of the rook okay so we could bring here but then his rook comes down and defends so we could go here which is probably a bit more annoying because then he has to go to the other side of the board okay so if we push here see if we can go here he's coming for our rook it's going to take a while um, let's push let's take drop doesn't drop okay oops let's just push this a bit let's get the king up why is he moving so fast i think it's panicking he wants me to make a mistake doesn't he so it's not a foregone conclusion that we've won anything here let's just attack let's take this rook comes and puts a check on uh let's go here goes back for the pawn now his king's gonna want to get these okay if we went he takes we take his rook comes down starts putting checks on i think we'll just keep that one for now could push up and just block it off but then his rook comes to the side then we take if we come here hmm looks a bit well his rook's concentrated so much on that pawn let's go here while we're thinking okay so what's the king doing wanting to link up these pawns pushing them down so let's go here with our king let's push on to the king and don't do that because it'll just push past okay so could attack this pawn can always go and attack our pawn when wins the pawn situation so if he does go we can take but his rook's going to put a check on us like i just said <laughs> right so let's have a look at this now do i get my king trapped if i'm not coming here can he worm his way in not just yet because this pawn's here so he will worm his way in eventually okay let's go here So it does drop with a check and we can go back up with a check his king rook is coming here so i need to be careful it's not a checkmate though but um i could be let me see so we take then his rook comes here we have space to come here then his king takes rook takes and we're getting a little bit squished aren't we getting a little bit squished i think that i'm doubting that position you know i'm actually going to put a check on the king i don't really feel confident that um, I mean, in fact I'm, I'm kind of willing to just get rid of this rook see if he wants to exchange 
because then we can push that pawn up there if he goes for it what do we think yeah if we went here like this I don't think he will take though I think he'll just ignore that I think he'll just go back here attacking this pawn yeah I'm gonna see if I can get away with it I don't think I will though I don't think he's going to take. Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm squeezing here. So he's coming for the pawns. Um, let's just bring this rook here. It might have been the better choice that we made. Uh, da -da 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 -da, take with a check. We can start moving this pawn up. Try and give them something to think about. It's coming around the back for our king and the pawn. I'm going to take the pawn. So he's going to come and do some repetitive checks on the king now. And just bring the king back. so just bring the pawn up just keep coming and just block off now with this and if he keeps the rook there let's just put a check on the king let's push up just push and block and let's attack the rook now it does capture okay let's get a queen with a check so it did get quite feisty there just do the step ladder now. Okay, wow. Yes, it did get quite feisty there. And I think the appropriate um, selection of moves is key, especially when we're looking at how we're traversing through our own personal beginner, intermediate, advanced level games. I'm going to take a shifty at the analysis here and see if we can see the crucial sta um, stages that were availed to us let's go here okay quick look at this uh, analysis here just seeing if there was anything as usual anything major that we missed and that we can work on so as part of the beginner intermediate advanced i'm rolling all this into one it's um just a recap of the sessions that we've covered um, a while back and looking at the placement of our pieces making sure that we're trying to be as safe as possible uh, developing our bishop here just to get king safety so we can castle so we do castle gauge bars not showing any major dips or anything so that's okay opening up the bishop and then they start doing some not quirky moves it's just they they they've they're now being defensive and the reversed so there's no major attacks going on so we decide to attack gauge bar doesn't like us attacking um, that particular piece I like that maneuver um, is it looking at attacking the knight prefers the knight uh, okay because probably potential for doubling the pawns but there's nothing behind the knight so the knight doesn't have to stay there anyway so we went with attacking the bishop then they brought the knight so we decided to take the bishop off the board so the rook now is in the center of the board as far as we're concerned it's not linked up with its um, other counterpart so we're trying to slightly go and get it with the queen obviously they see this so then we start challenging the center so we're sort of bouncing backwards and forwards from side to side just to try and confuse the opponent a little bit so we capture and they capture back so it's pretty even Stevens at the moment so then we take the knight off the ball because we thought the knight was going to be giving us a bit of trouble by coming here attacking the pawn etc etc I've been in many games where um, I say well I should shall I take or shall I keep the tension and once I've kept the tension I, I've ended up either drawing or losing the match so that's why we go for simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically 
hopefully I've got a rationale as to why I'm taking that piece off the board so that I don't have to kick myself afterwards when I do the evaluation. So that was a key point there for me taking the night off the board. Doesn't like us taking that night off the board though really, it's showing a slight plus point two, but plus point two is not anything major uh, for white. The rook is further in the center of the board. So again, we mentioned this, um, that that's a bit of an issue. So we were trying to own the file now, own this um, unprotected file, open file. So they bring the bishop out and we bring our queen across looking again to try and attack this um, sleeping rook but they see this so they bring their rook back linking up their rooks so we really wanted to still own this file and it's showing that we're in advantage because they've done that um, but I don't think we took advantage of it because we would basically says well I don't want don't want his rooks facing our queen so maybe there was a move that i could have done i don't know what it was maybe it's moving the queen here no uh, we moved it there already so maybe moving it up does definitely doesn't like that and i i didn't like that one either so is it like a night move then or something interesting times well it's minus 1.3 hmm Let me just put this on a minute. Oh, attacking the queen. Didn't see that. Gosh, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Oh, attacking the queen. All right, so these simple things, it eluded me because I was tunnel visioned on owning the file with the rooks. So attacking the queen didn't come into my equation. So that's something you've got to think about, little thing like that. Because I'm there thinking, oh, I want to own the file, so I'll bring the queen back. And I've got ample opportunity to attack. Okay, key point. So we reversed. So let's get this uh, back on here. So at the moment, it's a it's a drawn position. So we now look to um, own the file with the rooks, playing it nice and steady. Don't really know what this knight move was. Um, it's not really attacking anything at all. So then we can double up it's still showing well, it's at minus 2.2 now for black because we did say that they were going to attack this pawn down here but didn't really see what this knight was now we've got ownership of this file with the rooks it felt a little bit stronger for us so a smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong so we actually attacked and then they they attacked as well so they attacked and attacked a pawn we grabbed the pawn so positionally still feeling fairly happy and comfortable and we do have sights of this type of stuff as well with the knight so they move their knight back so that gives us an opportunity to grab so still at minus 1.3 at the moment so now we're trying to be a little bit clever with ourselves and um, trying to position the queen in such a way that maybe potentially coming across and attacking uh, mostly attacking this um, area here putting pressure onto the king he spots this but he brings his rook into the center of the board um, not saying we took full advantage of any of this so we're it's minus 6.4 now at the moment so we developed the knight looking to basically come and challenge this pawn but also to attack the rook if it goes there and they were more to set to go there anyway so we brought the knight up it's dropped down to minus 3.2 but it's still in our favor and the bishop attacks that bishop attack there cost them so it was like minus 6.0 now at this moment in time so we could actually take the bishop off the board which we did and then put a check on the king and at this moment in time it's looking fairly favorable for us minus 9.1 at the moment so we grabbed now it's not saying that that was the best move because it from whoops excuse me minus 9.1 it is and we take and it's minus 3.3 so what was the move that it's a massive drop there we go missed that opportunity knight fork on the king and the queen because again we were focused and tunnel visioned on 
either getting the queen off or getting the rook off when this was the potential more winning move but having said that it's still minus 3.3 so let's not we're not going to lose any sleep over that but that was a nice shot nice fork there something to think about okay so the king takes and it's minus 5.8 so we're not losing anything here positionally we're still okay so i'm fairly happy with that so we grab so it's dropped down to minus two point something from that so minus five it was and then us actually capturing the queen it's saying no don't think that was the right thing to do okay so doing that is not the right one either hmm let me see i can't really i was looking during the match but i really didn't see anything because i was trying to think of squeezing the queen here but the queen can't go there and i really want to get the queen off the board i don't like messing about with queens if they if i can avoid it was there something else no 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 exchange no queen here no nah. So capturing, we're still on the minus 2.6, so we're still in advantage and still fairly comfortable with the position, minus 2.4, then it's uh, minus 3. So now it's just a matter of jostling and it has actually dropped all the way down to minus 0 0.9. Mm. So something crucial to think about there, minus 3 to then minus 1. And that was from the rook move. <clears throat> Could it have been this? No, I think I put enough thought into the move. Um, I, I'll probably stick with whatever I did because I'm, I'm attacking the pawn. And then the opponent brings their rook across and it's minus 4.2 then at this point in time. So I'm not going to lose too much sleep. And then it drops again. And then it goes up again so basically at the end of the day we're looking for better position it doesn't like that pawn move but i'm fairly comfortable with the pawn move it is showing minus 0.5 so i've lost something somewhere but i just felt there's nothing else they can really do i mean i suppose you could bring this rook here maybe and attack this pawn what would i do then then obviously i'd just take his pawn here so to me it, it was no big shakes so he does capture capture so we've got poor majority on this side and he's got split pawns on that side so we're pushing forward bringing the king up and just attacking now just to try and make space for the king and now it's just a nice merry dance and hoping that the opponent basically makes mistakes it's minus 0.4 at this moment in time and attacking the king and position play grabbing with checks on the king and more checks and at, yeah at this stage here yeah this was where we thought Ooh, if we take the pawn then it's, it's going to come down here and start attacking just want to see if we take a look at that and see what happens so he's gone gone there and if we went like this because it's minus yeah so it's gone down to minus one three there and then we thought he's going to come here I, did, I really didn't like this picture it comes there it could take this and I could start pushing that's what I was thinking and then he takes I could start pushing but then my king felt like I was going to squish my king but it's showing minus, minus 3.4 at the minute so if I push, then if he puts the check on, he's just getting checks on me all the time. Here I come with the rook. Uh, if he comes here, then I suppose we can come here, but then his rook comes behind. Ooh, I don't like it, don't like it. Oh, massive drop yeah that would have been a mistake because <laughs> it would have been a checkmate there Ooh, cranky yes yeah, so that's why i didn't cover those lines basically 
because I didn't like it. I felt something like that potentially could happen. Obviously, I must have played that line a little bit wrong there, but in my head, that's the kind of thing I saw because um, of the Rook and the King. So that's why we avoided that type of thing. I'm not saying that I played it perfect there, and I may not have done those moves, but in my heart of hearts, my head was thinking, that's where you're going to end up. Don't do that move. So we came through and we just kept putting checks on the king and then decided well if we get rid of this rook then we can maybe you know start pushing these pawns up so we risked it for a biscuit so it's minus 7.2 at this moment so i think that was the better choice as we mentioned in the game of maneuvers rather than the other choice so we start putting checks on, we start pushing up and just seeing if it's, uh, yeah, so they've got nothing to promote themselves now and at this point it's um, pretty much game over. Okay, yeah, so that was, an, that was a nice learning game um, from beginner, intermediate, advanced. Um, I think everybody can learn from this type of game. You know, there's lots. There was lots of things in here that we I can pick up on um, as I'm developing my game. And one of the key questions is always around, well, the amount of games that you're playing, and every time you're doing an evaluation, um, you'd think that you'd be making perfect moves now. Yes and no, because each game is different and each position is different obviously if you're playing a game where it's simple and it's straightforward and you're just wiping the opponent off the floor then you're going to get perfect moves you're going to get zero zero zeros you know on the evaluation um, we're talking about games where it's evenly matched and the opponent knows what you're trying to do and you know what the opponent's trying to do so it really becomes more of a battle as to how which concepts you're going to bring into play into the game so that's why it's always different when you're doing your evaluations afterwards and it's trying to pick out the right concepts at the right time especially the key one around the last maneuvers that we did where do we take the pawn and let the rook and the king challenge my king i think we made the right choice based on our experience because there's more potential for the opponent to have checkmated me if we had gone the other way.